And we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Set for first major conversation. Our guest is already on standby. But let's quickly inform you or remind you that uh, operatives of Tantita Security Services Nigeria Limited, operated by um, Government Ekpe Mupulo, probably called uh, General Tom Polo, um, have continued to uncover illegal crude oil stealing pipelines in Delta State, uh, South South Nigeria. So, uh, we, as, as I said earlier, they've continued to uncover um, illegal crude oil stealing pipelines in Delta State, some of which have raised questions about the role of security agencies in the stealing. Now, one of such discoveries uh, was an illegal underwater pipeline and platform connected to a 48-inch Transfocados export trunk line in Delta State from which uh, bunkers, uh, together with government and security accomplices, directly siphoned clean the crude oil into ships and exported overseas. Now, the unearthing of the criminal pipeline and platform attached to the trunk line, operated by Shell Petroleum Com Development Company, SPDC, is a major breakthrough uh, in the renewed bid by the federal government, the Nigerian National Petroleum Com Corporation Limited, uh, and the Ministry of Defense and other stakeholders to stop oil theft in the country. Now, this was uh, some time ago last week, there have been more revelations recently as well. Uh, recently, Tantita Security Services, uh, as we said, led by former military leader, uh, government at Pemopulo, probably known as Tompulo, also um, apprehended uh, a crude oil vessel used for crude oil theft in Niger Delta Creeks. Uh, the vessel was, however, set ablaze without proper investigation by officers of the Nigerian Navy. Reacting to this um, legal luminary, Femi Falano, S.A. and his human rights lawyer in Nigeria, uh, called for the immediate sack or resignation of General Lucky Irabo, who is the chief of defense staff, over the destruction of that illegal oil bunkering vessel. Uh, speaking after the National Security Council meeting in Abuja um, last Friday, Irabo had defended the destruction of the vessel, he added that it was caught in the act and that the instrument of operation was set ablaze as there was no need for an investigation. However, citing section 111 of the Armed Forces Act, Falano said the justification of the Chief of Defense Staff was a criminal conduct. It is a trite law that the only that only the Federal High Court is empowered to order the interim or final for feature of any vessel that was used for conveying stolen crude. Now, Shili Rabo um, be axed or receive the hammer for these reasons. Joining us uh, to discuss this, I'm glad to say we have an oil and gas analyst, Zaki Bala, he's online uh, from Lagos State. Uh, Mr. Bala, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All right, let's start from the discoveries um, ongoing right now. I mean, what the scale of which has been huge and unprecedented in the history of Nigeria, and some will say even in the history of the world, as far as um, uh, the crude oil business is concerned. What are your thoughts on these discoveries? We can see what happened. Uh, we can talk about the Transforcados pipeline and the Trans Escarvos pipeline. The most recent one uh, was the discovery of uh, a nine inch pipeline attached to a major pipeline operated by uh, an IOC, which was very close to a security post and they did nothing about it. Your thoughts on these, uh, these discoveries? Uh -huh. Personally, uh, as somebody who is a practitioner in the oil and gas industry, uh, I'm not surprised that discoveries have been made. It's only the locations where these uh, major pipelines have been tapped, you know, for the stealing of the bulk. There is nothing new about crude oil theft as far as I'm concerned because. For a long time, we knew that uh, Nigeria at some point, especially the oil and gas industry, was experiencing business climate hostility. And among the major hostilities, you know, was crude oil theft. And it was the same crude oil theft that made many of the oil and gas companies to start running away from Nigeria. Not that I'm digressing, but I want to explain something here. When many of these oil, old, major oil uh, gas companies and two oil companies were trying to run away from Nigeria, instead of the government to come out and 
tell you, openly tell Nigerians that these companies are not divesting technically. They are actually running away because they are suffering from hostilities. One of the major ones was through oil test. If they had done that, that would have probably awakened Nigerians, especially around the axis of the Niger Delta basin, to, to make sure we collectively come in national interest to halt the situation. But they will their diversity and going to fuel. So Nigerians relax and didn't bother. But now the truth has come out. What is happening is the way the government said that uh, they were losing, well, Nigeria was losing about 400,000 barrels of crude oil per day. A lot of people will not understand what the government was saying technically. People will think the government was just talking about some bucket or drum of crude oil test. But if you do the necessary conversion, because the unit of crude oil is barrel, and you have 42 gallons in the barrel, and in one barrel, you have 42 gallons. Then in a gallon, you have 4 liters. When you do the conversion, we are talking about 60-something million liters of food oil per day. And that is equivalent to about 2,000 tankers, 33,000 liter tankers, 2,000 of those tankers being stolen per day. From that angle, you will know that that was not set by the ordinary thief or petty thief. It was very clear that it was a well-crafted, a well-coordinated, and a well syndicated criminality and theft. And it is now clear that those theft activities were carried out through well-crafted and well well -tech and and well glued back to the major trunk line, apart from the ones that are connected to other smaller pipes. So it is now clear that it is not the legitimate thief within the Niger Delta or oil producing areas that were the criminals. But it's possible that the well-crafted criminality is a clear indication and collaboration of maybe people within the communities where these pipelines are passing through, security agents, staff within the oil and gas companies, and uh, probably the risky and other collaborators. So from that angle alone, people like me who are practitioners, I wasn't surprised because oil companies have always been losing in terms of production. You will measure the crude oil and gas and water and sand at the wellhead and at the separator. At the point of transporting them to the oil terminals, the exact quantity that you want to see will not appear. That simply means they are being tapped along the, the front line or along the delivery pipeline. And it's now clear that this and well coordinated criminality was responsible for all these shortages and theft and vandalism. I'd like to ask do you think that approaching the court would also be a solution? Uh, we've also seen people who are saying, for, for, for instance, the likes of Falano, who's been very. Uh, vocal with this particular issue. He's been, uh, you know, some people saying this is ranting. Nigerians are ranting with the situation, especially with the fact that the vessel was bombed. Do you think that approaching the court will, uh, you know, yield any positive result? Well, your question is not very clear, but I don't know if you're talking about vessels. I'm talking about Ooh. the vessels that was bombed. What? In the course of this old theft, you say you're talking about what? The vessel that was burnt. Okay, maybe you may need to rephrase your question. So, my concern is do you think that approaching the court, whoever approaches the court, would yield any kind of result? Especially, uh, you have said that. Uh, oil theft is not a new issue, but we have a current situation where a vessel um, that was apprehended was burnt. So my question is, okay. do you think that approaching the court will yield any result whatsoever? Well, uh, you, one can see it from two angles, you know. I mean, because technically, even if somebody commits a murder, 
you know, a mother case, a mother will still be giving some 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 fair hearing in the court, regardless of so generally when, when activities like this uh, happen or activities of criminality, because Nigeria is supposed to be a democratic country, we expect that things will be done in a civil manner or civil order. So whichever way things happen, it will always be good that we don't resort what many Nigerians technically are jungle justice. And jungle justice doesn't mean you just, I mean, express your anger or aggression on human beings or fascism. It's always good to allow the due process of the law to take effect. All right. Uh, Mr. Bala, uh, do you agree with those who are fingering the um, uh, chief of defense staff in all of this, General Lucky Rabo, and saying that he should resign or he should be fired? Because of uh, what has transpired so far, uh, like we said, uh, the, the, the destruction of that oil vessel, which uh, Femi Falano SEN has said is evidence that should have been um, you know, preserved for the prosecution of whoever is responsible for this. Now, for that singular act of, of burning the vessel, do you think that is enough to demand for the, the removal of the chief of defense staff who justified that? Uh, personally, as an oil and gas, practitioner and analyst, and that shouldn't happen. If uh, the chief of defense staff acted maybe out of pain, and he probably somehow, somewhere, expresses his pain by, by authorizing the outright burning of that vessel, that is not enough, you know, to, to say he should be sacked. So when you take him to the, to the court, I mean, interpretations are different. I want to draw a kind of relationship or corollary with what was happening uh, with, with Shekau and Boko Haram. I mean, there, there was a time when Boko Haram and Shekau were really, I mean, killing Nigerians, causing destruction. At some point, some of the commands that, that were sent to the war front became so angry, so aggressive that if they, if they come across some of those Boko Haram members, they, they kill them outright. We remember that the international community or human rights started coming up and saying, no, no, no. I mean, they wouldn't want it that way. There should be judicial process. But personally, I didn't feel bad. I didn't, I didn't feel the action of those commanders were bad. It was because of what Nigeria was experiencing. So if you look at it from that angle, I mean, Nigeria's name is terribly bad if there is a place like that. But the international, uh, I mean, the death camp, it's not coming. Investors have run away. And if you look at it, before even the country was given to Tompolo, I mean, it was as if that the security agents were not working. So, and the chief of defense staff of this country is, uh, as, as of today, is General Lucky Irabo. That all those statements and those things were indictments on his uncle and other military personnel. So, I mean, the fact that he got so angered, pain, and authorized uh, the outright burning of that uh, vessel should honestly be, be mirrored from a positive prison. Hmm. Okay. But, but, but uh, I mean, Falano has raised, uh, you know, uh, some important points. And he says that um, uh, uh, Lucky Rabo's response, you know, um, when he was asked about this, is this, um, this issue at the end of that Security Council meeting, uh, he described it as uh, a deliberate attempt to cover up the involvement of military personnel in the serious crime of oil theft in the Niger Delta, as there is no provision in the rules of engagement that authorizes the military personnel or security operatives to set fire to or destroy vessels um, loaded with stolen crude. In fact, he says that, um, that the chief of defense staff is not unaware that under the service laws of the country, the burning of a ship or vessel by a military personnel is a serious offense which attracts life imprisonment without an option of fine. So he says this is a deliberate attempt to cover up the involvement of the military in crude oil theft in the country. Destroy the evidence. Uh 
to be honest, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Nigeria has a lot of educated people. You guys are energy journalists. Even if we were not to have low cost, as energy journalists, you guys can investigate and know the truth, whether there was a cover up or not. So I'm not really bothered uh, on whether there was uh, a cover up or not. If investigation is carried out, not even by, by, by lawyers or legal people, energy journalists like you can carry out investigation and come out with the truth. But please, we shouldn't lose focus of what we want to achieve. What we intend to achieve is to make sure we stamp out criminality, especially this well-crafted, well-indicated criminality that has made oil companies to be losing so much in terms of their investment, that has caused Nigeria to have a bad image on the international pedestal, and that has made investors to see Nigeria as a very bad uh, destination. Oh, quickly, so, I... oil and gas in, 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 uh, in the world today. So we, we already know that uh, the federal government says that uh, with the destruction of the vessel, there's no need for investigation. I'd like you to share your thoughts as a Nigerian, as an individual in this case now. Do you think there's no need for investigation? And those who have actually asked that anyone that feels very aggrieved with this should approach the court. Others are saying evidence has been destroyed. What really is your thoughts on this? Well, government is uh, government as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the fact that government says there must be no investigation does not mean that in informal investigation will not take place. It does not mean that energy channel research will just suspend everything and, and assume that uh, we, we should be business as usual. Energy journalists like you will always dig to the bottomless part of everything that happens. So, official statement by government is different. Your position as energy journalists and other interested Nigerians and the international com community and other people that are interested in the activities of the Nigerian oil and gas industry will still carry on, regardless of what uh, government thinks. At the end of the day, we just want to make sure things are stabilized, but it's ramped up back so that Nigeria will be able to meet up with our water production. Nigeria will be able to meet up with our internal production to make sure we generate so much and breach our budget deficit. Okay, can you talk about, um, uh, I mean, the fact that some of these, <laughs> these pipelines that have been laid, these insertions uh, to the major pipelines like uh, the Transforcados pipeline, Trans Escravos pipeline, some of them as little as nine inches in diameter, uh, but they are not hidden. You know, you see a case where a pipeline stretches four kilometers and goes r directly to a platform owned by an oil company where a gigantic vessel comes into the waters of Nigeria and then loads crude oil that is stolen and takes it out. Now, I, I asked myself, what about the complicity of um, uh, armed forces in all of this? Because we have them patrolling the nooks and crannies of the Niger Delta, also um, on the high seas and high waters of the country. Um, so I want you to speak about the culpability uh, and the cooperation of our military forces with this theft that is going on. Because I don't know, um, uh, Mr. Zakabala, if an aeroplane can come into the Nigerian airspace, land people in this country, take them away without the Nigerian airspace uh, agency or authority knowing about it, you know, without the, uh, the aviation um, regulatory agencies knowing about it, at least the airspace authority, it should be somewhere on the radar. Now, can a ship, a, a crude oil vessel, a tanker, get into Nigerian waters and spend hours loading the product and leave without being seen by, by the security agencies? Is it possible? No, and that was why we said it was a well-crafted, a well-syndicated, and a well-coordinated criminality. You know, though, they said in heaven that is no small victim, but in the context of food oil theft in Nigeria, 
we can separate it into small tests and major or bigger tests. What we are seeing is a big test or bigger test. Because let us not forget, there was a time, I and mean, everybody was blaming uh, criminals within the Niger Delta, especially those who are involved in activities that have to do with illegal refineries. We were thinking there were those who were responsible for all the losses, apart from the environmental uh, degradation. What they are doing is criminality. I don't support it, but it is now very clear that you explain when you have major trunk lines like that with with other pipes for stealing carefully and intelligently and technically welded to them, and those welds are, are technical ways that can only be carried out by experts. The only way such things can happen is way planning operation. A lot of stakeholders are involved in the criminality. So the best way I can describe them is if some of them are Nigerians, then they are lawyers, I mean they are disloyal citizens. But all those are I'm best be described as economic vampires, economic maroons, and economic theft. Because there is no way anybody can get to such points and be able out to carry out such activities of All right, so, so, so Mr. That's Zaka, Mr. Zaka Bala, before, before we go, Mr. Bala, who should pay the price? Who should be held responsible if we see that, that uh, soldiers are, are manning a security post just uh, a few inches, a few meters from a pipeline theft point, like we saw uh, two days ago in Delta State. They have a post there. They have guns. They are wearing military uniform. Federal Republic of Nigeria. And there's a theft you know, point, a uh, pipeline in session, stealing oil from the major pipeline. Just in front of them, who should pay the price? Who should be held responsible? Since you're saying the chief of defense staff should not be held responsible, then who should be held? Is it the chief of army staff? Chief of Navy staff, maybe? No, the, let investigation reveal those who should be held responsible. Because if you go to such communities, without being cooperating, cannot succeed. Okay. Without threats among the military cooperating, okay. there, will, there will be no success. Even in the country, okay. because there are control targets. When right. the pressure drop is taking place as a result of the test, if somebody in some of the offices don't raise a lot, nobody will know. Some okay, Zakabala, you, you've said it all. You've said it all that they need to investigate some more. Um, but how can you investigate when the evidence has been destroyed? Uh, <laughs> but you've said it all. You've said all that more investigations need to be the conducted. And you said Irabo should not be sacked. Yes. Zakabala, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. We have to go. Uh, All and Gas Analyst Zakabala joins us, join us from somewhere in Lagos State. We'll be talking about uh, the political space as INEC has warned political supporters and uh, parties against hate speech and violent activities or acts. We'll be right back after this break. Please stay with us.